Strong India is an organization working towards the welfare of animals with the motto Animals Welfare Through Human Education. It inspires compassion for all the living beings and care for the environment among students through its two popular programs, Compassionate Classroom for School Students and Compassionate Scholar for College Students. It is associated with IIT Delhi, Hans Raj College, Delhi Technical University, and many more. I would now like to hand over the session to the co-founder and managing trustee of Straw India, Ms. Vasanti Kumar. Over to you, ma'am. Uh, Tejas, uh, for that lovely introduction, and thank, thank you, NSS ARSD, for giving us this opportunity to be able to conduct this uh, webinar. Uh, thank you for choosing Straw. My name is Vasanti Kumar, as you already said. I'm the co-founder of uh, Straw India, and our main job uh, our or our um, mission is to sow seeds of compassion in school children and in college students. We take uh, many annual welfare uh, activities uh, to the college students because many of them are not aware of what is uh, happening to animals. We work with many colleges um, in Delhi, uh, and I'm so happy that ARSD has given us this opportunity as well. Animals too have feelings. This is a topic that we are going to be talking today. And uh, in fact, this is such a lovely topic. And to be um, truthful, this is the first time we are going to be doing this uh, workshop on this topic. And uh, we realized that this topic is so directly connected with our mission of sowing seeds of compassion for animals. We believe that animal welfare awareness begins actually here. If only people know that animals too have feelings, or in other words, animals to feel pain as much as we do, or that the color of their blood is exactly like the color of our blood, I'm sure we will make a difference to animals because they will realize that animals are so much like us. And it's not just this. If people become compassionate to animals who belong to a totally different species, I'm sure they will tend to become compassionate to animals and to people as well. So. It will, it will so happen that now we come across cases where people uh, see an accident and walk away, but that will not be the case because they feel compassion for the other party. And so then it will happen that they will come forward to help those people as well. Uh, moving forward, our program for today would uh, start with an icebreaker. It will be done by Ipsita Sarkar, who, is, <coughs> who works with straw. And she, cre <coughs> sorry, she creates contents for <laughs> And she also generates our stories of kindness programs. She makes great stories and she's a great storyteller. She will take us through this. This will be just for about five minutes or 10 minutes maybe. I'm sure you're going to enjoy this. Then this will be followed by a presentation by Sineen Khan. She believes in our mission and she's been volunteering for Straw. And uh, she is a consumer behaviorist, uh, behavior specialist. And she has a career spanning over 25 years. And she is also an active blogger and she engages in theater and music and creative arts. And she is a great animal enthusiast who loves dogs and cats and rabbits and birds and many more, I think. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Samin, for uh, um, you know, coming forward to do this presentation for us. Hi, everybody. I'm just so excited to be amongst a large group of animal sensitive people. And I think uh, what's also really interesting is that uh, a lot of you can actually read uh, emotions um, that we, you know, just uh, Ipshita just took you through. And uh, what was really nice was that for this same clip, you had so many uh, different emotions coming up, like with the playful, you also somebody said frustrated. And uh, with the other one, there was calming and jealousy together. So there are obviously so many shades to um, emotions per se. And um, that's the attempt now in this presentation to actually take you through uh, the many emotions that do exist in the animal world. So I'm just going to share my screen and project the presentation. Okay, so can everybody see the presentation? Uh, okay. Yes, ma'am. All right. Right. So um, the presentation is about the fact that animals have feelings. 
and we start with looking at the entire gamut um of emotions and when it comes to human emotions many emotion wheels have been plotted simple to complicated where they actually plot out the basic emotions and the um related emotions and the higher degree emotions uh so we as human beings of course have the ability to feel so many different types of emotions and what is interesting to see is that animals too show many of these emotions. motions uh, in this very kaleidoscope so beginning with the kaleidoscope um i touch upon uh, joy happiness and play now this is one of the emotions uh, that i'm sure a lot of you have seen in animals around especially dogs you know we very often see dogs playing together jumping on each other uh, trying to playfully bite each other's faces and uh, they you see them chasing balls and running around in the park so that really is undoubtedly a lot of happiness and joy that these dogs are feeling the interesting thing is that this very emotion of happiness and joy through play is also exhibited in many animals across the board um uh, elephants have been seen to engage in play with objects and you just saw the video in which they were playing with the uh, tires uh, and the picture here shows a baby elephant playing with a ball so elephants certainly can enjoy themselves to play uh interestingly again uh, if you see the picture next to it that's an octopus and uh, if you just google octopus playing with a ball you will come across so many different pictures and this kind of plays been registered even by uh, researchers especially those in canada so uh, even an animal like an octopus who lives so deep down in the sea is capable of playing and enjoying himself and the last picture there that you see is of two cow elks who don't have fancy toys to play with but make the most of the flood water on the field moving on to the next emotion which is of love um, many many faces to love right i mean there's romantic love there's love between children there's love between friends and peers so we're going to look at these different uh, faces of love so romantic love um one does see uh, you know dogs pairing off into uh, you know a um, partners uh, even if you see the stray dogs around you do see two of them kind of hanging around walking around the lanes together but you the interesting bit is really that you see this even in uh, whales so uh, you know the picture the first one that you see over there is of two whales in argentina who were observed following a particular ritual of swimming together um you know playing with each other um touching their uh, flippers together and you know swimming so the the scientists who actually observed these two whales clearly recorded that this was an example of romantic love um between these two whales we've also seen that there are certain animals who actually pair for life so the macaroni penguin the swans here the beavers they have shown the ability to pair as a romantic couple for life so what well, you know we tend to think that the animal kingdom is perhaps not uh, you know into monogamy but we are wrong in that because they are capable of developing uh, romantic uh, liaisons for life the love between uh, parents and children uh, we've seen that again in cats and dogs who live near our localities and often people tell us don't go near that dog because she's just had a litter and she's going to be ferocious because they tend to be protective about their pups right but we've also seen that in the animal kingdom uh, a huge bit of parental love exists and animals like the elephant are a great example of it where the child and the mother um, show a lot of affection and in the sad case of uh, the mother elephant dying the baby elephant can be seen wailing and grieving as well so the bond between mother and child very strong there as well in monkeys again uh, it is and i'm sure you've seen it because in delhi a lot of our colonies have monkeys and you know groups of uh, um, families of monkeys uh, traveling together and you 
always see a mother monkey with a baby monkey kind of hanging from her right the the one interesting fact that i learned from uh, an animal rescue um, agency was that even if the baby monkey dies the mother uh, holds that baby monkey for days on end that's the degree of love that um, is there in monkeys um if you see the picture on the right that's actually um a dog mother who took care of a newborn goat in a farm in america so uh, these animals are capable of actually showing love to uh, babies of other species too and in the delhi zoo i don't know how many of you did come across that article which said that uh, one of the dogs in the zoo had actually taken care of uh, a baby a tiger cub okay friendship um, you know you tend to think that this is an emotion which is really more of a human emotion and all this dosti yaari that we talk about read about see in the movies but animals show such fantastic examples of this kind of love as well uh the first picture there is of a chimpanzee and a tiger cub and uh, this is from again an animal reserve in america where this chimpanzee became great friends with uh, this tiger cub that had been rescued by the farm uh, below that you see an orangutan with uh, a dog now this dog had actually followed this orangutan in a reserve that was meant to take care of in endangered uh, orangutans and after that day this dog never went back home and stayed with this uh, orangutan uh, forever the picture next to that is of a dog with uh, a baby duck a chick and uh, this again was a case of um, you know the a rescue by uh, a farm where this dog stayed and the uh, mother duck had been mauled by a fox so the people who lived on this farm rescued this chick and the chick became great friends with with the dog uh, a very interesting story about the friendship uh, between a donkey and a goat who were friends and who would you know feed together and then they were separated by two different uh, animal protection services and the goat stopped eating because the goat was missing his friend and the animal uh, farm people realized that oh hey that's where they've gone wrong and they got the donkey back and uh, everything was hunky dory for the two of them after that so a great example of how friendships can exist on their own as well and the last picture there is not from a sanctuary it's actually taken by an animal photographer and he had he's made this really beautiful photo story uh, which captures uh, um, the friendship between a deer and a rabbit moving on to the next kind of emotion which is that of empathy again we tend to think this is a very high order sort of uh, emotion that only human beings are capable of feeling and at that only some human beings are not everybody can be empathetic but in the case of animals we see that it is an emotion that they feel as well and uh, this is best exemplified by the story of uh, these elephants who mourned a lost conservationist so the story goes that uh, there was this uh, conservationist uh, who had a great relationship with the elephants that lived on his uh, sanctuary um and um he could even talk to them because he had learned the the way of communicating uh, that you know he saw between elephants in his sanctuary when this animal conservationist died the elephants would walk all the way from uh, the reserve to the place that he stayed and uh, there is this record by the son of the conservationist that these elephants continued to do this for many days after the death of the conservationist so can you imagine the amount of empathy that these elephants were capable of feeling and if you again if you research a bit more you see that uh, this empathy is something which a lot of animal species can feel dogs we do know about we know that they are capable of feeling human sadness and grief and they respond to tears in human beings uh, 
And that's why they work really well as comfort dogs. Uh, a lot of autistic people uh, have dogs, a lot of veterans, a lot of uh, handicapped people um, have dogs because they're able to feel the difficulty or the sort of emotional ups and downs that human beings go through. But very interestingly, even rats uh, have shown empathy in lab experiments where uh, a group of rats can actually show behavior uh, responding to another group of rats who are uh, being given some sort of a painful experience. So rats, again, can feel it. So right from a huge elephant, which you see down there, uh, who is capable of not only empathizing with the human being that's passed away, but also shows the ability to console each other through intertwining their trunks to even the smallest of animals, which is the rat, right? It's amazing. And uh, the last picture over there is of a mother hen. And mother hens are known to be extremely sensitive to, to their chicks if they're in distress. So again, an example of for them being capable of feeling empathy. Okay, embarrassment as a feeling. We know what it feels like to be embarrassed, but so do animals. Monkeys certainly are capable of feeling embarrassment. And um, if you read up on it, you will see examples where, you know, they have known that they've done something stupid, like falling into a ditch while other monkeys are observing them and then jumping out and behaving like, hey, nothing's happened to me. So they can feel embarrassed as well. And dogs, I'm sure uh, you've seen how they behave if they do something naughty in the house, uh, if they've, uh, you know, had a toilet accident in the house or if they've torn something or, you know, torn up your homework for one and you scream at them they look like oh god we shouldn't have done this i'm so sorry that i did it so again uh, an emotion that uh, animals can certainly feel and it's not just us fear and anxiety a lot of us feel uh, really nervous around exams or say you know meeting a new group of people or being in an unusual situation but even animals clearly feel that uh, while we know of dogs, because we do see what happens to them around Diwali with all the loud noises, or if there's a thunderstorm, uh, you see a lot of dogs who go into hiding because they are undergoing that anxiety. And a lot of us go to our vets to say, please give me a sedative or some sort of tranquilizer for our dog. So we know that dogs feel it. We know that cats feel it. We've seen them get into these sort of postures in which they hunch up and they start hissing and growling. You know that they're scared either of another cat or of, uh, of dogs. But we've also seen that animals such as turtles, rats, and lizards, they are also capable of feeling anxious. And in lab experiments, their temperature has gone up out of fear. So fear and anxiety, I think the important thing is anxiety. Uh, you know, a fear situation can actually make them go into a, a state that impacts their chemicals inside their body and can impact, impact their health after that. So certainly capable of feeling that. Anger. So uh, anger, we know that wild horses are very difficult to train, right? They tend to throw off their riders. We've seen that in a lot of Hindi movies where the hero actually is able to uh, train the wild horse and is able to rein in his temper. Um, Amongst horses also, you see them getting into fights uh, and brawls because they feel the anger. Our own pets, we have seen in dogs that uh, when you leave them locked up inside the house and you've happily gone off somewhere and you come back and you see that the cushions and again the papers have been torn, that's because A, he could have been anxious and scared, but a lot of times he may just simply be angry at being left behind. Cats, we've seen... Uh, they are capable of feeling anger and you see them getting into fights and that's where we get the term getting into a cat fight from, right? Because they, you've seen cats feeling anger and, you know, uh, fighting with each other. But the award really for the most angry animal goes to the wild boar. And the picture there is, is of a wild boar uh, hitting a man. So when I actually took this picture out for a long time, I thought the wild boar is actually hitting into some sort of, some sort of a sack. And then later on, I realized, they, hey, no, it's actually a man and then when I googled some more there were so many pictures of a wild boar attacking human beings so they are certainly capable of feeling a lot of anger jealousy 
sometimes this emotion is not understood by human beings you know uh, you you get a new cat you get uh, you know uh, you get a new pup into the house because you want to have another pup you're getting bored you you know you think that it'll be nice to have more dogs inside the house and you get another dog or you get another cat and uh, we don't realize but actually the the older animal is capable of feeling jealous and left out and we need to be aware of that similarly uh, in situations where there's a new baby that comes into the house a lot of uh, pet parents take a lot of measures to introduce the dog to the baby because they are aware that my dog can feel jealous of the fact that i'm giving that much more attention to my baby and also you see jealousy amongst uh, creatures such as even parrots and dogs fighting for food together so remember that the animals that you share your world with can certainly feel jealous and you must must take care of trying to reduce that jealousy through corrective actions boredom so if you thought you're the only people who are getting bored because of the pandemic and you can't meet your friends and you can't go out for movies and you can't go to the restaurant remember that even animals are very capable of feeling boredom i mean how many times have you been out of the house for really long and come back to a really sulking pet at home because your dog and your cat certainly feel very bored if you don't play with them for for a long time so please engage with your pets at home uh, they are capable of feeling left out and feeling bored and even animals in the wild such as monkeys and chimpanzees they certainly also feel bored and animals in the zoo think about it they don't really have that much of an outlet uh, as the ones in the wild greed again an emotion that you can't blame them for because really food is tough to come by they don't have a breakfast dinner and lunch time set so they need to go and hunt for their food and the more the better the squirrel is uh, known as one of the animals that can get very gluttonous and i think that picture kind of proves it um and uh, the chimpanzee uh, that you see over there he could certainly do with a lot more hands and legs to gather more food so again an example of greed and if you were to go on uh, youtube videos you will see a lot of examples of uh, cats and dogs trying to eat from four or five bowls at the same time and not letting anybody else get to that food so greed certainly that's a feeling that they feel and finally grief again there is this feeling that animals perhaps don't have that kind of emotional development that kind of mental cognitive development to form memories and therefore they may not really feel nostalgic or miss people or feel sad out of sight is perhaps out of mind for them but that doesn't seem to be the case means if you start researching and looking up you will see many many examples which make you stop and think that it's not just us and there are many animals who may be grieving uh, for very similar situations the chimpanzee picture that you see there is a representative of the story of uh, a baby chimpanzee who lost his mother at a particular spot in a reserve and uh, he just couldn't get over it no matter how much the handlers there tried to engage him in various activities with the larger group but he kept going back to that spot where his mother had died and eventually he just got into a huge depression starved himself and went back to that very spot and died with that of course is 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 a monkey family right and you tend to think that they're more like us so okay maybe they feel grief but think about birds birds are capable of understanding grief and feeling grief so what the picture that you see there is of a group of magpies who are mourning the loss of a mate they tend to gather around uh, a dead a magpie they call out to the other uh, magpies they have a sort of a funeral and then they go away so even birds with that small little brain of theirs capable of feeling grief animals that live under water or or near the oceans there again we have seen examples of of grief you see the sea lion over there the sea lion mother can be heard wailing just like a human mother if she was to witness her baby being devoured by whales or sharks so clearly she feels the grief just as a human mother would 
and getting back to the story of funerals. If you see the picture at the bottom over there, that is a group of elephants who are having a funeral for a dead baby elephant. So when you see um, animals uh, perhaps experiencing the loss of a fellow animal or perhaps even of uh, a human uh, partner of theirs, please be sensitive to the fact that they themselves could be going into depression and feeling very, very sad at the occurrence. So a huge kaleidoscope of emotions, wouldn't we say? In with the animals that we've just seen, right? From joy, love, empathy, embarrassment, boredom, jealousy, greed, fear and anxiety, anger, grief. My God, I mean, right from a little rat, an octopus, sea lions, going into uh, monkeys, the entire family of monkeys, to birds, to elephants, to whales, I mean, the story continues no matter where you look. So animals are certainly, certainly capable of feeling most of the emotions that you and I can feel. And if you want to delve deeper into this, there are books that have been written, and I've shared the example of one reference there by uh, Jacques Panksepp, who's written a book on um, uh, the, the emotions of human beings as well as of animals. So whoever's interested, please do take a look at that. So a message really to all of you uh, through this presentation is that uh, look around um, when you share your life and your world with animals, look carefully at them, understand their situation, see that uh, you know they are capable of feeling the same emotions you do, while they may not be able to talk to you in a language that you can understand. Their facial expressions may not be as visible to you or perhaps not as easily understandable as human facial expressions are, but rest be assured that they are certainly feeling the same sort of emotion that you would feel in a place like that. And that's really our message of being able to recognize these emotions so that you're able to be more compassionate towards them and able to affect your behavior to be able to be to actually bring about um, a greater healing in the animal that you are uh, with at that point in time. And with that, I come to the end of the presentation. Thank you. <laughs>